said you would like to fight the winner of this fight. Well, here he is. What do you have to say? Oh, it's time to get it on. He got the beat, dog, now. Let's go. Right hand. Right there. That was it. He called it again. He's trying to see. He, him was doing like this. He can't see, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the morning after look <laughs> in the famous words of the goat Roly Romero last night ha happy Easter everybody happy Easter everybody you guys <laughs> happy Easter to all of you who uh, celebrate Easter happy Easter Sunday to all of you now look that card last night it's one of the most entertaining cards I've seen ever. Shout out to the PBC. Anyone who watched that entire card last night from Moulton on was one of the greatest, most entertaining from an entertaining aspect. Not the matchups were great, but how all the fights planned out. Those fights, as far as entertainment value, one of the greatest cards I've ever seen. I mean, just all time, one of the greatest, most entertaining cars I've ever seen. So shout out to the PBC. And shout out to this community. 150,000 views for him, Zoo versus uh, Fedora, which, like I said, wasn't really expected. And it was the first um, pay-per-view for Amazon Prime. Um, I mean, I know I didn't expect those type of numbers. So shout out to all of you proven once again that here in this community, we're diehard fans. Now, <laughs> let's talk about Roly Romero versus Pitbull Cruz. <laughs> Pitbull hit Roly Romero so damn hard that he just, he just turned around and just, just looked at the fans so they can just witness the massacre. <laughs> Roly, Roly was like, Lord. <laughs> he hit Roly. Roly put his head on the top rope like, hey, y'all. <laughs> Help. <laughs> Brother, listen, Roly Romero, surprisingly enough, was doing pretty good. <laughs> he was doing pretty good when he was able to hit, move, and then clinch, right? But once the ref took the clinching away, it was just a matter of time. All right, and it didn't take long. I mean, he he clinched for maybe like three rounds, but they took the clinching away, and it was a matter of time. Uh, Esau Pitbull Cruz just ah, uh, that guy is is definitely the Terminator. <laughs> and that's the black two sugars, a little bit of cream. <sighs> All right, now Fundora and Hemzu. That fight was the bloodiest fight I've ever personally witnessed. Right there. That was it. You called it again. That has to be the second bloodiest fight in the history of boxing. And, and, and I said it last night. Since 1810, December 1810, when Tom Molino went to the UK to, to face Tom Cribb. Let me, I, and, and I told the story, but... I, Listen, just to give you guys a hint on how bloody that fight was, it is well documented that Tom Molino, an ex-American slave, by the way, going over to the UK to fight the heavyweight champion of the UK, needless to say, a white guy, all right? The fight was so bloody that the crowd couldn't tell who was who. <laughs> the crowd, it is well documented, the crowd was looking at the fight and couldn't tell who was who. That's how bloody that fight was. So that's definitely the bloodiest fight in, a, in the history of boxing. But this must be number two. And I know people brought up Badu Jack last night. The only problem with that is, which was a bloodbath. But Badu Jack was the only one gushing blood that fight. In this fight, him Zoo, not only was he shooting blood 18 feet in the air, almost the height of his opponent, Fedora, shooting blood 18 feet in the air. Not only was it him, Fandora was pouring dark burgundy blood from his broken nose. That was it, it looked it looked like it looked like somebody gave birth to twins. <laughs> right and left. 
with that right hand. Needless to say, him Zhu was winning that fight before the cut. Him Zhu, bro, the the burgundy blood, all that happened within two rounds because him Zhu was cut the third round. The right hands he was landing on Fedora busted his nose. To, he was on his way to winning. All right, if it wasn't for that cut, I'm telling you, I wouldn't have gotten to the bag last night. I got to the bag. And not just me, apparently, Errol Spence did too. Hey, I'm glad he won, man. <laughs> because of that cut, I won big, okay, on my bookie. Everybody, make sure you go to my bookie to place your bets. Add showbiz to the promo code. Y'all saw me bet in front of you guys live, but I bet money on my own. <laughs> After that, because I just couldn't take the trolling. So I, I bet, secretly, I bet some money on it and I, I, I came up big. But needless to say, though I'm happy financially that Fundor won the fight, Himzu was the better fighter. Mm -hmm. See, Himzu, he couldn't see. The cut did, of course, um, did play a part a bit. <laughs> um, couldn't see anything. And there was plenty of blood, but no excuses. The better man won tonight. <laughs> Once he was blinded, bro, he, I mean, he, he couldn't see. He couldn't get to Fundora. That was it, all right? But shout out to Fundora, who definitely showed heart. He had a broken nose for 10 rounds. All right, he was swallowing blood. He couldn't breathe. So, I mean, shout out to both of those guys. It was just a bloodbath and a war. Now, let's talk about Errol the Truth Spence. Oh, it's time to get it on. He got the beat dog now. Errol Spence walking into the ring. Terrence Bud Crawford, he had his response. And listen, we all understand Terrence Bud Crawford here. Terrence Bud Crawford is righteous. He's absolutely right here. But there's three problems with Terrence Crawford saying that Errol Spence has to wait his turn as if he's next. There's three problems with that. One, Leonard Ellerby already said that Errol Spence was next. Two, on their premiere on Amazon Prime, they advertised Errol Spence versus Fandora by having Errol Spence walk into the ring, all right? And three, Terrence Crawford's biggest leverage is that he's the WBO mandatory. The problem with that is he's the WBO mandatory. It is well documented that the PBC and the WBO aren't bed buddies. This, go way, this goes way back to Floyd Mayweather days. Floyd Mayweather vacating the WBO after the Pacquiao fight. So the PBC, it's almost like they don't acknowledge the WBO. So don't be surprised if Fundora just vacates the WBO and take on Errol the True Spence and Leonard Ellerby saying that it was about the money and all those things. He never mentioned the belt. So... Uh, Sadly to say, though, I think Terrence Crawford was done horribly. I think uh, injustice has happened here in the sport of boxing. Errol Spence will be next. And with that said, <laughs> I don't, I don't want to piss people off. But with that said, I'm just going to give you guys the, the how I really feel. I've been wanting Fandora versus Errol Spence for years, <laughs> I, I, listen, I, listen, Crawford has been done, both are true, Crawford has been done horribly wrong, all right, and I'm tuning in, I've been, I've been wanting Fandora versus Errol Spence for too long, I, I, I always thought that was aesthetically a gorgeous fight to make, and a great fight to watch, I'ma be watching it, bruh, I'm sorry, that, that fight is worth the money, I will be watching it, and it's going to be a fantastic, it can't help but to be a fantastic fight, all right, and listen, I want to say this. F forget about the fights. Just focus in on Errol Spence. It was good to see him in good spirits, in fighting spirits. He didn't sound like, you know, he was uh, apologetic for getting his ass whipped by Terrence Crawford the last fight. The first time, the last time you saw Errol Spence, he was getting his head beat in, all right? He still came in like, yeah, the big dog is here. So it it's like, okay, it's good to see that you're, you have a fighter's heart, a fighter's will, you're not apologizing. And the thing is this, I was trying to think about the lead up to Fandora and how Errol Spence should take this lead up and how he should talk to the media. It's very simple. Errol Spence can easily bet, man, y'all you, know I was looking bad at 147, man, but I'm at 154 now. The big dog is here. That's all he has to do. Yeah, he got me. 
right? He got me, but I was nothing at 147. I'm at 154 now, more natural weight. The big dog is here. That's it. That's all he has to do and talk like that, right? And they'll probably ask him if he'll take a rematch and he's going to say, yeah, that he wants the rematch. But, you know, who knows if they'll ever fight again, all right? Um, with that said, though, I, 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 I'm actually looking forward to Errol Spence versus Fandora. The PBC, shout out to you. You guys saw that. I mean, I totally criticized the PBC and they showed up to the war room last night. Like, look, I'm here. <laughs> Whatever y'all got to say, I'm here. Throw all the stones. They showed up. So, and people threw stones and they were like, hey, shout out to all of y'all. And then they left. You know what I mean? So you got to give the PBC love for just, like I said, unapologetic. You know, look, this is what we're going to do. And they spoke to the people and then they bounced. They spent time with the war room. So shout out. Uh, to the PBC for, you know, taking the criticism on the chin. Um, everybody, have a happy Easter. It's the Boxer Revolution. Showbiz the dope. I'm out.